What is Passive House? It's essentially uh, an exercise in how to uh, reduce the load of a building substantially so that uh, by the time you're providing HVAC equipment uh, to serve the load, it's really tiny. Uh, so if you think about a building as a six-sided cube, a little box, uh, the first thing you do is insulate it. And then when you're detailing the insulation, you worry about all of the conduits uh, where heat can escape through what's called thermal bridging, and you ameliorate that condition. And then you make it super airtight so that you have no unintended air leakage, uh, so that the only air you're trying to move through the building is what you want to be moving through the building through mechanical ventilation. And then you put an energy recovery device on that, and you recycle the BTUs and by doing all of that, you've reduced the load substantially. Uh, and then you provide little tiny HVAC equipment, uh, and the only thing that remains is lighting and plug load and what's called unregulated load in the code, uh, and you hope to hit a specific energy target. Um, this is a slide about the fact that the dense multifamily environment is more space efficient and therefore more environmentally friendly. We're big believers in the idea that densification uh, is going to be a required uh, piece of the development puzzle to the extent that we create sustainable cities and spaces moving forward. This is a slide about an elevation of our building and quick stats, 26 stories, 272,000 square feet. It's going to be the tallest and largest residential passive house when it opens. There's a 16 story uh, one over in Germany, uh, but uh, that's also big, nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, but. This is a breakdown of carbon emissions in the city of New York, and I think that uh, you know, through the last 40 years from uh, the Carter administration until today, uh, there have been a lot of different drivers to get people focused on the challenge of energy use in buildings, starting with the oil embargo uh, in the 70s and the moral equivalency of war speech. But I think that now the motivating factor for most of the people engaged in the conversation is uh, the climate crisis and what, if anything, can we really do about it? Uh, and uh, I was, before coming to Related, uh, a project manager at the New York State uh, Energy Research and Development Authority, which most people call NYSERDA. And in that capacity, I administered funding programs to incentivize green buildings and energy efficiency. And one of the things that was happening while I was there was the development of what was called the Interim Climate Action Plan uh, for 2050 which then Governor Patterson uh, uh, put into motion when he set a goal of reducing carbon emissions 80% uh, by 2050 against a 2005 baseline base case. Uh, and so Brookhaven National Lab was involved in modeling for us uh, what it would take to reduce carbon emissions statewide by 80%. And they came up with this slide, which had more of an impact on my life than I realized that it would the first time I saw it. Uh, so basically, the argument of this slide is that the state is at 250 million metric tons or so of carbon emissions, and that an 80% reduction uh, needs to result in you know 55.4 is the goal to get to 80% reduced. And they modeled some scenarios. and. Only one of them gets you all the way there, but even in the one where you don't get to the target, it still requires that you have a completely carbon neutral building stock that includes every single new and existing building in the state of New York. And so the formula to get to that outcome is drastically reduce the load in each of those buildings. Uh, remove all the fossil fuels that are used to heat those buildings because they have a carbon profile, replace all those fossil fuels like oil and gas with all electricity, and then um, make the grid all renewable. And so 
it seemed like a daunting challenge, and I <coughs> joked around about it. It was sort of like gallows humor with my sustainability colleagues about how like this is pretty dire. Uh, seems like tough road to hoe. Uh, and then uh, we came upon, uh, you know, I was part of when I went to Verlated, I was still having this in my mind about um, how do we really address this problem in earnest, um, given the fact that it's really hard to do, excuse me, really hard to do it in New York, where uh, on a BTU basis, electricity in New York City is five times the cost of natural gas. So how is it that I can feel good about making an all-electric heated and cooled space when I know I'm going to be imposing an energy cost burden on the future inhabitants of the building? Uh, and it was with that mindset that th I went into this visioning session with the city uh, where they came out with a similar set of requirements to get the city uh, to a place to meet their carbon goals for 2050. Uh, and now that sort of coalesced into this one city built to last plan with which I'm sure you're all familiar. Uh, and so uh, in, in developing this RFP, um, it seemed clear that uh, Cornell was the type of client and the campus was the type of environment that could accommodate a very forward thinking approach um, that was not the norm uh, and would allow us uh, the opportunity to experiment with how could you realize the sort of prototypical building that we would need to solve the problems uh, that were being communicated uh, to the whole stakeholder community. And uh, it seems like Passive House is the natural first step because in order to get to that all renewable grid, uh, it only makes sense to begin at the building level and greatly reduce the demand for energy in the building. And that's what Passive House is all about. So you can see how it stacks up to uh, buildings that are benchmarked uh, and you know, this is a projected energy use intensity. Um, EUI, energy use intensity from the source, is defined as thousands of BTUs per square foot per year of primary energy consumption to support um, all of the activity in the building. And within that total budget, you're given some for heating and some for cooling. Uh, and that's really the heart of what Passive House is all about. And in order to get there, they really stress uh, the importance of air tightness. Um, and anybody who has a little bit of background in physics understands that, right? Because we all know, right, it's so intuitive that BTU is equal CFM times delta T times 1.08. And when you look at it that way, every CFM of unintended air movement is a huge en energy penalty. Um, and it's something that we've just lived with in the built environment uh, for a really long time. Uh, so they really stress that, and it's a super aggressive and super meaningful thing to do uh, to your building envelope.